So hi, welcome to this video. So this video is a special video because we will talk about a new certification from the Linux Foundation called the Certified GitOps Associate. So let's dive deep into this certification. Let's understand what are the things that are important, what are the things that you want to know about the certification, and also how can you pass the exam and what are the criteria to pass it. So without further delay, let's get started. So this is the batch and to discuss about the certification, this is meant for you to test your GitOps application and principles. So this all areas are there, including configuration as code, DevOps, DevSecOps, CI, CD. And then this is your badge. And this is our official announcement. So you can go and purchase this certification using this link over here. I will paste the GitHub repo link in the description. So feel free to add it. And facts about the certification. So this certification costs around 250 USD or around 20,000 INR. Uh, the good part is like you can get discount vouchers using uh, Black Friday sales, Black Friday sales or KubeCon attendee vouchers as well. Also, there are programs like Lyft Scholarship from Linux Foundation that will help you to go through and pass and buy the certification. So that certification is valid for three years and it includes 12 months exam eligibility. Uh, the good part is like if you don't pass the exam, you can retake it. And the question is of 60 uh, questions and the duration is 90 minutes. And the passing marks is around in 100, it's around 75 or to be in number of questions you need to do correct, it's 45 out of 60 as there is no negative marks over here. Uh, you can access notepad and calculator because as I tell uh, that is not required over here and you should download the PCI secure browser which you can do that using your training portal link after you schedule the exam. So uh, after you have taken the exam, the scores come to you after 24 hours, sometimes before it as well. So let's discuss how the exams are weighted. So this is graph which shows everything that your exam concludes. So if you go through the repository, you will find all of them listed over here, like the type of questions, the type of uh, topics which you can get. So we will go from one by one, but let's uh, understand the graph at first. So you see uh, like principles is 30%, patterns is around 20%, terms to another 20 practices like how you can use GitOps is around 16% and tools like what helps you to implement GitOps is around 14%. So it's not that complicated and it's a beginner friendly certification. So we will start with the uh, section wise. So first is GitOps terminology. So that falls under 20%. So let's go uh, by each topic one by one so that you can have a beginner idea. And if you want to learn more, you can just go this Go through this and learn about the following topics in more details. So the first is continuous. Like for example, whenever you do GitOps, it doesn't mean that it needs to be instantaneous. It can be continuous, which means it might take time between the reconciliation of state. Declarative description. It means how you're defining your state. State here means uh, like your state of the cluster or state of the environment so declarative means you are declaring what you want not how it will achieve that desired state is again the state which you want your cluster to be and state drift means when your cluster state is moving from the desired state to something different it can be due to a lot of reasons maybe some changes uh, from the team members or something broke but yeah that is eventually what is state drift Reconciliation is like when you try to remove the state drift so that it can go back to the desired state. 
and GitHub managed system software are the tools which will help you to implement GitOps. So there are many. You will go through the tooling part later on. State store is where your declarative manifest are stored that acts as a single source of truth. So wherever the state store is, it will define what your cluster will reflect. It can be stored in buckets or in your repository. And then feedback loop is very important. It declares before the reconciliation process how you will gather the feedback and how you will understand if this reconciliation is required or not. Rollback is like whenever you have a change that breaks your state or that is undesirable. Rollback means you go back to the previous state where things were working according to your desire. It is very simple to implement if it's a git based action. So you can just use git revert and you can sync or reconcile your state with the tooling and you will uh, see your previous state has reached. So yeah, as the important is like it helps you as a safety net. Like if something breaks, you can just go and reconcile. So these are the important principles in the terminology. Next is your principles. That is how your GitOps is defined. So principles are the biggest portion. It's around 30%. So let's go there. So this thing is inspired from the GitOps principle. So if you go and read the following, you will get a similar approach and similar thing which is written over here. Again, declarative means declaring the state which you want your cluster to be. You can understand and differentiate between declarative versus imperative if you are curious enough. Version and immutable is like you must version your state because you need to understand how your state is changing. And immutability helps you ensure consistency and reliability. Pulled automatically is a concept. Some of the tools which use which pulls the state change and reflects that to the desired state. And continuously reconcile is like it keeps on checking the state and changes if there is some different thing. Now coming back to related practices, there are a couple of things over here. First is configuration as a code. It helps you to like if you have heard about Ansible, it helps you to define how your a configuration has been defined and then there is infrastructure as code if you have heard about open tofu or terraform it is that so learn about what is infrastructure as code how it is implemented as well as CSE how they are implemented and the difference between them apart from that there is something called state locking uh, learn about how state locking works over here State locking, as you can see in the description, ensures that only one process or user can modify the infrastructure. So that is important because you don't want to mess your cluster when a lot of people are trying to change it. And the last is DevOps versus DevSecOps. Understand how DevSecOps is implemented in GitOps, how it is helpful how GitOps empowers DevSecOps and the difference and importance. So those are the couple of things which are very important. And then understand CI, CD. What are they? How are they different? How continuous integration and continuous delivery or continuous deployment relate with each other? Then understand where does GitOps fit in CD and where does GitOps fit in CI? So if you see CI comes before GitOps, like you build your artifacts before you deploy them. So that makes sense. And then CD versus GitOps should be a difference. CD is where you deploy it once and then you need to trigger it. But GitOps is where the reconciliation happens. So understand the difference because there might be questions about those. Next is GitOps patterns. If you see GitOps pattern are also quite a heavy section with 20% weightage in it. So let's go there. So here a uh, couple of patterns over, are there. First is deployment and release pattern. There are a lot of deployment and release patterns like rolling update, recreate, blue green. Understand how they differ and understand what are they. If you uh, go and search in Google, you will see a lot of pictures which will help you to understand this thing better. 
like understand Kennedy feature toggles and all of those things because uh, that are helpful to know as well uh, and helps you understand how the following work next is progressive delivery pattern so progressive is like Canary where you allow subset of users to ingest the changes and then launch it to the wider audience then one of the most important questions I found was pull versus driven driven understand how both of them differ and the relationship between both of them they have come a couple of similarity as well as difference so understanding that is very helpful and last is understanding how the GitOps tool is there so understand the in cluster versus external reconciler where they are sitting and how they interact with the API then the state stored management where is the state stored and then secret management so if you have seen I have written a, a good blog on how seal secrets work so you can go through this and understand how this thing is working because this will help you to first of all learn what seal secrets secondly use and understand the tools like Argo CD and thirdly go end to end and that is very important because you will get a lot of questions where your experimentation and normal skills are tested so I think you should definitely try this tutorial out to understand end to end how things are working and next is tooling as I was saying toolings are very important toolings is how you implement a, a task so try this blog out because you will find a lot of things over here and end to end if you haven't tried out Argo CD and let's focus on the different tools which are there uh, learn what is Helm customized, how they are manifest, are structured and how uh, the tools differ uh, how the manifest are structured is very important like for example if you go you will see this is how customize is structured understand because there are questions about that uh, next is Helm Helm is a package manager, customize is same. So understand how those two use each other, how do those two differ. And lastly understand you don't need those always. You can use normal Kubernetes manifest as well to package like that is done in this tutorial. Lastly, understand how your state store is happening like in buckets or get. Understand the different types of reconciliation engines how they operate, whether they operate in a push model or a pull model and whether they have an internal or external reconciler just go to the website, maybe deploy them, play with it you will get a good idea lastly, understand Dora metrics because that is important to uh, how much time it requires for your applications to running again understand the feedback loop which we were talking about and uh, take some attention to Prometheus and Alert Manager they, that are important you might have questions and also it's good to know about how GitOps can send notifications to your Slack or Teams apart from that I think this should be enough but if you are more curious there are three links which I pasted over here you can go through them that will be helpful for you to understand those and lastly a couple of tips from my side again I want to repeat learn and play with Argo CD that is very helpful to understand and clear your concepts the second is kind of similar create an application and learn how to uh, use it and use and understand the architectures a lot of tools are using different architecture understand how they come together lastly some PSI tips uh, keep your decks sturdy uh, carry your ID and one of the you can read those those are very basic like uh, come before 30 minutes before the exam with your id and after you are done with the exam delete your psi browser because it helps you to sit for the exam easily next time the most important thing is like there might be a lot of questions that you don't understand or you can't recall or you don't uh, uh, feel the answer is okay you can mark them to review and after the exam ends you can come back to them and solve them this is how i do that helps me to solve the exam quickly so you can do this and if you are doing all of those things correctly I am sure you will get a badge like this for yourself I passed the exam on 25th March like two, uh, around two months ago I, I didn't have the time to post this but yeah here is the video
if you feel you want to add something over here feel free to set the pull request and thank you for watching the video all the best for your exam